Doodle bud. Here I am in Victoria, BC, in a hotel. I'm doing some business today. Filming the end of this video, I got some takeout, went to the noodle box, and I got this pen. And this is a, I'm trying to do a really awesome video for everyone. I might have goofed it up. I'm going to see if I can save it here in the edit. What we did is this is the end of the video I'm showing you right now. This is a Pilot 912 FA nib. Out of the box, it's a flex nib. It's a modern day nib that flexes, but it's got some problems. It didn't flow very well. I had to change it to an aftermarket feed to fix that. That fixed it big time. Writes great, lots of flex. I'm gonna show before and after. But I wasn't happy with the way it wrote. Vintage ones were just better as far as the thin little hairline stroke that you get when you wanna do flex writing. So this didn't have it on the level that I wanted. But thank you to Josh Lax. He just reground this nib and he's going to show you exactly how he did it. What's going to happen? I'm going to go back to some old footage, show you the before writing sample. I put this pen in the mail. It goes to a nibmeister named Josh Lax. He's in, I think, New Jersey. Full-time lawyer, part-time nibmeister, studied under the uh, renowned Richard Binder. So we're going to get to see the work he does. He receives this pen. He's going to go through it, inspect it. Check it under, under a little microscope. You're going to get some good footage. I think this has like never been done before. And you're going to get to see the whole process of him turning. Yeah, I got no focus going on right now. There we go. That's it. That's the size of the tip he's working with. And he had to grind this thing with precision by hand. So if you want to see how he did this, just grab a snack, grab a drink, and let's watch. These thin strokes on here, when you're not applying the pressure... I tell you what, if these can get thinner, this looks so much better. That ratio from thick and thin is what really makes calligraphy pop. Now, this is not a calligraphy nib, but I feel if the tipping on here was done a little bit smaller, this would just look absolutely amazing. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do a little writing sample here just to have a log and I'm going to send this pen off to Josh to do. Now how we're going to do this, because I want to kind of keep this organic. When you send a pen off, the task is a little bit tricky. You want to try to communicate what you want done to the nib on this pen. They receive it. They do their best job to look at the nib, make a plan of attack, do the grind, test it, and then hope that this is really what you want. Now, if they're quite skilled, usually they get it bang on. But again, they do have to fly a little bit blind through your instruction and their experience. Uh, usually they can deliver really spot on what you're looking for. But there always is some worry on their part that they did the job that you want. And also on your part, the pen leaves your hand and then comes back whatever a month or two or three months later, depending how long you have to wait sometimes. These folks are quite busy. And then you get the pen and you uncap it, you put ink in it and you're going to write and one of two things is going to happen. You're going to be so excited and go, yes, this is always what I, how I wanted this pen to write. Or you'll be like, oh, that's not what I was hoping for. <laughs> so we're going to go through that experience together. I'm going to just do a writing sample right now. So we have a log of where the pen left off. We're going to leave that. I'm going to put this in the mail, send it off to Josh. He's going to record himself assessing this pen, thinking about his plan of attack, how he's going to grind this nib. He's going to grind it. You're going to get to watch him do that. He's going to talk us through it. And then I'm going to get the pen back and see how it goes. Now, he's not going to see this initial footage of me analyzing this pen and, and uh, doing my writing sample. I'm not going to see his footage of him grinding it. I'm going to get all that stuff after I finish shooting my reaction to getting this nib done and then I'll put it together into the video that you're seeing now. So yeah, I don't know how this pen's gonna turn out, but I'm excited to see what he can do. So the before writing sample is done. All there's left for me to do now is clean out the pen, package it, and pop it into the mail. So here's the moment of truth, I got the pen in a little protective tube there. I got some instructions for Josh and I'm gonna go chuck this into the post right now. Made a special little trip across the line because I have some other stuff to pick up. So I'm down here in Washington State, gonna mail this and pick up some other stuff to review. Doodle 
Doodlebud. All right, uh, I am not Doodlebud, that was just a joke, but I am holding this uh, sort of suspicious looking test tube. Um, it looks like it had to do with some sort of pen. Looks like a pilot. Anyway, there is a pilot contained within the wrapping here as I pull it out. And it is a little dusty, but no matter. It is a pilot, I think it's a 912 FA. And this one uh, looks like it's a fair amount of tipping. And it looks like Doodlebud has installed the, uh, I guess, Flexnib factory um, feed. It looks a little low, but we're gonna get into all that. All right, so what are we doing today? We are gonna grind this. The goal is to make a, as close to a hairline uh, point as possible while still being smooth. Now, I will tell you, dear viewers, that it actually, if you wanna make a true hairline, meaning uh, like 0.01 millimeter or something like that, you are likely going to uh, not enjoy it that much uh, if you're looking for smoothness. Um, it just is naturally rough. You're writing on basically a razor's edge. But uh, we're not gonna go that deep. We are going to go a little bit dialed down from that because we want Doodlebud to uh, rave and hem and haw about this. Um, so without further ado, let's get into the pre-grind inspection. You are looking at this Pilot FA nib through my 10X moment uh, lens, macro lens. Uh, so right away, we, we have a problem here. And that is that the way this feed is installed, it is actually pushing the tines away and spreading them open. And uh, it may be, it doesn't look like there's a bend. So if you kind of look at the plane that's at the top of the nib, it doesn't necessarily look like it's a bend. I actually am gonna look at it with a loop because I'm not gonna see it as well um, this way as I will with a loop. But um, there's something going on here that needs to be remedied. The other thing I think I mentioned before is that this, um, feed may or may not be sitting in the right spot, but uh, my prediction would be it would if I got it into a better position, it would actually still be um, pushing things away. So that'll have to be fixed. Um, let's talk a little bit about what the order of operations is gonna be, and I'm gonna attempt to use a probe. All right, so um, what's gonna happen is I'm going to have to remove the top of the tipping, uh, sides of the tipping and the bottom of the tipping. And then I'm gonna have to make some different chamfer and diagonal cuts to give these, this nib some radius so it's not uh, awfully um, scratchy when it's being used. Now, I'll point out one thing I've heard, I, it, it rings true to me. Um, you actually need, you see there's like a sloping nature of the tipping there. Uh, Mike Matsuyama, who I believe worked for Sailor, um, was quoted by someone as saying, and I've, I've tried it and I think it's true, that when you have something that flexes like this, you sometimes want some of that slope. And so I think that's what you're seeing right there. This is going to have to come off of the uh, feed for some of these operations. And the other thing that's gonna have to happen is I'm gonna have to stabilize this nib. Um, oftentimes, this is a pro, but I actually use the uh, bottom of a uh, exacto knife to actually keep these tines from flapping around from the vibrations of the tool. Um, I don't know if everyone does that, uh, depending on the machining you're using, um, but with the way I do it, you need to do that. So uh, that is the pre-inspection. Um, the other thing to we're gonna look at just as, you know, so it spreads, right? Um, I may have to tune this up a little bit because it may be sprung. I'm gonna look at it in a different way in a second. It's a thinner piece of gold and I often cut into this region right over here um, when I'm making things very, very fine. Uh, I'm gonna have to make some game time decisions about that. Anyway, so that is the pre-grinding look at this nib. Hopefully we'll come out okay and if not, uh, this will be a very embarrassing moment on YouTube. Anyway, uh, let me go get started and I'll come back to you shortly uh, with some further reflections. Here is the patient and I've taken it off of the feed and as we can see, uh, the tines are basically straight. Um, and I don't know if that is because of uh, 
flexing it, it's slowly unbent, or it's the feed has pushed it there and there they've remained, or it came from the factory like that. So I'm gonna need to do a little bit of tuning because I don't want to um, have a problem when we get into it. Now, uh, the other thing I'm looking for is a bend in sort of this region down here, um, because that, also would explain why they're flapped open. Looking can go to the loop, it didn't seem like there was a bend, but here I've discovered uh, what could present an issue. So if you're looking at this side, the left tine, you'll see that the it's actually smaller. Let's see if I can get in close and focus, there we go. It's actually smaller because it's cut uh, at an uneven um, point between the left and the right tine. So the left tine is a little bit smaller and it is slightly bent in. So I'm gonna need to correct that because when you grind it, if you think about it, you're grinding into it on different planes, you're gonna wind up with uh, some sort of lopsided something. Um, so I'm gonna correct that. I think I'm going to uh, push the tines together a little, um, but uh, I am not gonna close up this all the way as I would if we were gonna start writing and then we'll worry about the feed later. All right, I'm gonna do some, some tweaking with this and then uh, we'll get right to the grinder and start working on this bad boy. I know I said we get right to the grinder, but I just had to share this with you. So I um, got the tines closer together. Uh, I could explain it, it may not make any sense. Um, but as you can see that it actually is sitting on the feed quite nicely. It is the tine slit is tapering uh, closed towards the front, um, meaning towards the front of the nib. Um, and uh, it looks pretty good and it does not look like the feed is causing any trouble. Uh, let me just actually show you real quick a feature of this pen um, under the magnification. So you can see there's sort of a step out right there. There's a cutout. Um, and so when, when Flexed Factory makes these things, um, it looks like they have milled out, but um, basically they cut a similar channel that you might find to the, the pilot nib. Now, what that does is it sort of gives you this orientation. I think though that there's a, that this is actually more of an optimal setup, but um, we'll be that as it may, we'll go with for just for now, uh, how this slides into place right there. If I can get it to focus, there we go. Um, all right, so now to the grinding. All right, so you are looking at my Craftsman slash Dremel on its stand with an oxide drum uh, positioned right in the collet. And let's make sure it's tight. All right, it's good. Uh, and so I use a foot pedal so I can use both hands. Um, and I'm gonna start grinding away. Now it's gonna be kind of weird for me to narrate over what I'm doing. Uh, so I'm just going to do it, and then at some point I'll show you the finished product. Uh, but uh, enjoy the views. <laughs> Right, this is obviously going to look very ragged, but fear thee not, I will get it all set up in a moment. Uh, but as you can see, we've cut away a fair amount of tipping, uh, and uh, we're left with something that somewhat resembles the shape that Pilot sent it to Doodle Butt in. Um, but obviously, uh, the plating and stuff I took off on the bottom because you had to. Um, and we're going to smooth this one out. So you can see that it has pretty sharp edge right there. 
Uh, and I'm not that worried about it because sandpaper is your friend and it's going to take care of everything. Um, similarly, the diagonal cuts, I'm going to even out by hand because, because it was very soft on the grinder and I did not want to, uh, damage it in any way by going too long, too fast. So I will clean that up. Uh, but despite what you may be thinking in your core right now, this is actually looking pretty good. All right. I'll be back with more shortly. So I have been hard at work shaping the tip of this thing, which I will tell you is no easy task because it is uh, very soft. So we're getting, I have no idea actually, I have not measured this line, but it's very soft. The downstroke is pulling it up. But when you go like that, ooh, this needs a little more work. Be back in a second. So here we go, we're gonna stabilize. Checking it out with the loop again. Did you see me on camera? Uh, all right, it's interesting. The material is cutting at an interesting angle. And I don't know if that's because it's flopping around and I'm sort of powerless to do anything about it. Let's see, this is why you need nails. All right, back to the magnification. All right, so I've been working on this. Uh, I tried it a couple different ways, really fine, uh, a little softer. And what I'm finding is that this is the optimal ratio of smoothness to flex variation. So any finer than this, it's gonna be much scratchier. For me, I do not like writing like this at all. But on the other hand, you can get things like this going. It produces so much flow that I feel like I can't get a line that isn't glistening. So here we go. Oh, is that fine flex writing? I, Leave it to the flex experts to figure out. But for me, the remit is to go as fine as possible while keeping it smooth. To me, this is where you land. I keep trying to close up the feed, but it doesn't really make much of a difference. So we'll send it back to Nate, we'll charge him a pretty penny. And we'll see what he has to say about it when he gets it. All right. Thank you. I thought I would check in with Josh to see how it was going. And I didn't get the answer back that I was hoping for initially. He was running into some problems. He wasn't going so great. Made me a little nervous. But then I remembered he is a Nibmeister. He's got the force. He's a Jedi Master. He will do it. And he messaged me the next day, said he got it just right. So I was excited. All right. I keep saying all right. But uh, that's how I like to begin. Um, you may notice that my hands are a bit cleaner than uh, when we left off in the last clip. 
I uh, had to step away from this for, I had some plans I had to attend to. So I'm back now. What I've done is I did a little bit of hand shaping because the issue I was finding was I just wasn't getting a really good cross stroke or the fine stroke was too um, heavy in my opinion. So here we have these. And so this is Rhodia graph paper. I like it because it uh, reveals all problems. And so um, if you look at it, you know, this is like what we're looking for, but really we're looking for this right here. If you see this curvature, right? That's my ultimate goal, but I want that doing it all the time. Because if you look around this page, a lot of the strokes around it, and it's from different work that I was doing, uh, are not that fine. So I think I finally got it, and I'm going to try and move the camera in so you can see and forgive the shadow uh, that's created. But I'm tr I think I've got it to the place I want it. It's actually, there's a little bit of feedback, but that's going to be unavoidable. But I'm starting to really see that fine stroke then when i do this i'm getting it consistent right so as you can see it's that really nice fine i think we're looking for like a 0.02 or 03 millimeter uh stroke so that it really looks like this pensarian uh, you know is it as smooth as we were fixing to originally no um because if it isn't this fine with this feed, I don't think you're going to get the type of effect. So yes, a little toothy to me, hopefully, uh, well, not everyone agrees. Sometimes I'm oversensitive to these things, which works to uh, the customer's benefit. Basically, what I was feeling before is that really any line I was putting down was like super wet. And now I'm getting really nice fine, fine lines, really thick lines. If you go slow on this, you get like a double broad, and maybe triple broad if you're fixing it, all right? Um, but that that is the way that this had to be arranged. So uh, thank you for coming on this journey. I know there's a lot um, of dead time where you're just watching me do stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, that's sort of it. I can uh, show the nib a little more, you see. You remember what we started with, I'm trying to focus it for you right there. Um, you may remember that it was, uh, had a whole bunch of tipping. I've taken a lot off because in my judgment, that is what is gonna give us the best result. Um, and so uh, I could zoom in on it, but for sake of brevity, um, here it is. All right, thank you. So here we are in the bustling town of Sumas, Washington, here to pick up my pen because it's ready. Super pumped. So now we have the moment of truth. Through the magic of editing, I have not actually watched the videos that Josh provided of him grinding the nib. I received the pen. I had to head out of town right away, but I brought the pen with me to try this out. I'm going to ink it up do a writing sample, and then I'll, I'll watch the video that you just saw of him grinding the nib, and I'll comment on it as well. But I just had to do this. I'm not even at home. I'm uh, in Victoria right now, staying in a hotel. So <laughs> I brought my gear, and uh, here we are. Let me ink it up. Okay, here we go. I like to post this pen. Let's see how this thing writes. It's a very nice fine line. Let's try the flex out. You might hear some uh, noise. The One of the bus stops is just down the street here. I'm trying to get the focus just right for everyone. Oh, that is significantly finer on the cross strokes. You know, it has a little bit of a tooth to it just because it is so fine. There are limits, but that is a massive, massive difference on that finest line that this pen can produce. On the back side of this page, or I should say the other side, is the same writing sample I did before I sent it. What I'm going to do is just reposition the camera here and just write with it a little bit, get used to it, and then I'll compare 
the before and after. So when you get a pen ground like this, especially it being a flex nib, very fine point, it takes a little time to practice and get used to it like a new instrument. So I just tried writing a bunch of stuff, even what I'm going to have for dinner if you don't know what to write. Very impressed. This You can see the comparison here. Those thin strokes are perfect. Exactly what I was hoping compared to the previous stock nib grind. This thing is fantastic. Just did some more writing. Took my time. Maybe spent 45 minutes as I recorded this. I just couldn't be any more pleased. The result is exactly what I was looking for. Perfect line variation. Yes, a little toothy, but you're going to get that. I love writing my grandmother's name and, and practicing connecting the cross on the T to come down and finish off the back of the D. One of those things I like to do. So I finished my snack and I watched the videos, refilled my drink, and I'm having to voice over this part of the video because for some reason the audio got totally garbled. So I'm going to give you some closing thoughts. So my hand motion and my speaking will be out of whack, but bear with me. Thanks to Josh Lax uh, for doing everything you did there. Those videos were absolutely amazing. Seeing you work this pen and uh, just the care and attention that you put into this really uh, you know, made me bring respect to an even further level. I had no idea. I thought I had an idea. I really had no idea just how in-depth you would go into something like this. And thank you for all the commentary and footage, up-close views of the nib and your grinding was fantastic. I'm going to cherish this pen now. It was on the verge of, of me selling the pen. I wasn't overly excited about it. It worked great, but it wasn't exactly what I wanted. I am now going to keep this pen and keep this thing forever. So it was worth every penny, especially if you think about how much that cost was over the lifetime of the pen. Uh, it's, it's totally worth it. So I hope this uh, answered some questions to folks out there who are thinking of getting someone to grind their nib. For me, this was absolutely worth it. Something I've been stressing out for about a while. We got to learn so many things. Got to see the little tools and accessories that you use to help you during your grinding process, even while you have longer fingernails. So you can put your finger up against the nib there to control it even better. That's just, it's crazy. Like that level that you go to to perfect your art, your, your craftsmanship, and just you don't let anything slide. So very impressed. I thought I knew a lot before I realized I knew nothing. So this pen's going to be saved. I'm going to keep this forever. I think you really pulled out just the perfect grind, at least for me. And that's what's so tough to do is to interpret what someone's hoping for. And you did that just wonderfully. You were a little bit worried. It turned out perfect. You don't need to have any worries with this one. So again, if I haven't said it already a hundred times, thank you. To Josh, be sure to check out the JJ Lax Penco site to hook up with Josh if there's anything you're looking to do. Also, you can pick up pens that already have a custom grind from Josh if you go to the Esterbrook website. He has something called a scribe nib that he does, and they have them in stock, and he does them in batches. So that's one way to check out his work as well. I'd love to hear from you down in the comments. If you have a pen with a grind or one you want to get done, that'd be great. Please share that in the comments. Curious what people are looking for, hit subscribe thumbs up, comment, all that stuff. We'll catch you next time.